go by the name Mike Fest, and this is Sit Down on Inner Empire Radio Airwaves, Casual Conversations on KNBC KCAA, from Victorville to Temecula, from Pomona to Palm Springs, we are the IE. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure to be back on the air with you guys on Tuesday on KCAA. I go by the name Mike Flex, and this is Casual Conversations, Brendan and I. I just want to let the audience know, I got a crazy phone call this morning for my uh, cohort, Cosmo, and he advised me that he has a uh, transition. He is no longer identifying as Cosmo. He has transitioned into Mr. Ron Whiteman. Ron Whiteman is in the building. I would like for you guys to put your hands together for my new co-host, Mr. Ron Whiteman. Mr. Ron Whiteman. Hello, person of color. <laughs> Thank you for being here on such short notice. Hey, we're always on time. That's what I <laughs> Well, um, I, I, I don't even know how to uh, get into this with uh, my new uh, cohorts here. Uh, Mr. Ron Whiteman, do you want me to call you Ron, uh, Ronnie, uh, Whiteman, Mr. Man? Uh, I sense a little sarcasm in your voice there. Well, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm bring the tension here. You can call me Ron Whiteman. Okay, Mr. Wright, Mr. Whiteman. Mr. Whiteman. Mr. Whiteman's in the building. Thank you for... Uh, taking some of your precious I would say time. it's good to be here, um, but you're black, so but keep going. So, um, with this quick transition that you're going through as you're identifying as a white man, what's been some of the changes that you've gone through within the last 13 hours as a white man? Well, I tell you, I haven't had one sad thing today. <laughs> okay. I flew past this cop. Okay. It, was, it, it was exhilarating, it was. Told him I was sorry, he let me go, gave me a couple bucks for gas. Okay, how, how did that go? Did you check, uh, you got money, you got extra money, what's going on? Well, he just let me go with a warning and paid for my gas. It's wonderful. Are uh, you paid for your gas? It's a great 13 hours of being white, I tell you. It's, would it's you, great. Are you, would you ever transition back into... I don't know. That whole jail thing and black women, I don't know. Okay. It's so, kind of rough out there. Well, thank you for being here. Um, real quick, let's get into some local news here. I know that you guys have been hearing about it. Um, on my notepad here, there was a smash and grab at the Ontario Mills, again, Probably this weekend, Negroes. you know how they do. Um, there was, they said there were shots of fires, but um, there was no gunshot, it was a, but people was running out of that place. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's becoming a more common thing, uh, smash and grabs. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, Mr. Whiteman, uh, Ontario is not ghetto. Who told you that? Okay. <laughs> I just thought that that that, that, that <laughs> must was be a different thing. Ontario. Yeah, no, you, you was thinking of a different Ontario, Ontario. Canada, is that what you meant? No, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, in the Empire. Definitely no. that one there. Um so that was going on there. I want to give a big shout out to uh my brother here, Mr. DeMarco from King Real Estate. Please check him out if you're in the business of purchasing a home. Uh I recommend DeMarco and Marissa at King Icon real estate you can find them on instagram uh icon realty group they're one of my favorites right there uh, i want to check out what's my man rj polo are uh, you familiar do you go to any uh black clubs mr ron whiteman <laughs> no no I, I don't you've never been there well to make a couple of arrests maybe but that's about it <laughs> okay serve well, some warrants well ron uh not ron my man rj polo what's he got going on this week well, I know last week he was there with, um, what's this guy's name? I forget the brother's name. I'm sure you did. Yes. What's this guy's name? LV? Well, that was last week then. And um, who else? You, you're awfully quiet there. Do you uh, like food? Uh, what kind of food are you into? Do you like, um, uh, what kind of ethnicity food do you like, sir? White. Goulash. Hot dogs, hamburgers, pizza, the okay. usual. The hot dog, the pizza. No hot sauce, though. Okay, do you know about, um, I was just lost my page right now. I was going to check out this one right here. Cafe Organics, do you know about them? No, I sure don't. Well, they do. are you into vegan food? No, I'm not. No. 
it's, it's just, not at all you, you're terrible man the more grease the more sugar the more fat okay so if you're into vegan food check out cafe organics down there on hospitality lane at 420 hospitality lane uh chef Boudot, he does that um great cu cuisine down there i want to give one more plug to i love chicken and waffles on highland that was my man big d spot <laughs> And uh, we still go there and patron the chicken business. Chicken and waffles. I love chicken and waffles. I'm sure you here. do there, buddy. Yes. And the plug at the Waterman Swap Meet. Let me go check out his page. I know every week he's posting some new out, uh, outfits and items on his Instagram page right here. Uh, well, yeah. He got some stuff that says haters, blow, and ratchet department. If you guys are into those type of clothing, check him out at the Waterman Swap Meet. That's right there. Um, in local news, not local news, but in world news, we had a pass-in, uh, Paul Rubin. Are you familiar with Paul Rubin, Mr. Whiteman? The Pee Wee Herman guy? Yes. The one that was uh, pleasuring himself in the movie theater? Well, I didn't want to go there, though. But well, he yes. did. He might as well. <laughs> well, he, he passed away this last weekend at the age of 70. Um, last night, I had to go on to YouTube and yes, pull up tequila. Horns. The, the Pull up tequila. The song where he did on his movie and uh that's like my favorite scene ever where he was asking the people like excuse me excuse me i'm trying to make a phone call that was the greatest clip right there um one more story and we're going to get into our special guest eric go like three or four stories down you're going to see a black face it says we definitely need white babies i think this is a story for I mr whiteman let's see what this uh clip we had to say real quick well, onto the clip. There was a clip that was, uh, this is a black dude saying that he, we as United States need more Caucasian babies to be created in the world. And um, he got his whole audience off on the, on, the, on the left foot. He was on the Dr. Phil show. You might know this guy as uh, the JLP, Jesse Lee Jesse Peterson. Lee Peterson. Jesse Lee Peterson. I think he is a straight up um, uh, agent for Mr. Ron hey, Whiteman, we Mr. Ron Whiteman, yes, right? yes. yes. and your radio host, yes. Okay, and you said you believe white people should have more children. We definitely need white babies, and I tremble at the idea that white babies, that the white like uh, group, is going I down like in numbers because if you lose white folks, America is over for America. Because if you notice, white people they tend to be old. more innovative. They're more creative. They, they have ideas about things. All these other races don't do nothing but destroy. They don't build, but they destroy. Wow. And that is from uh, <laughs> Jesse Lee Peterson. What's your take yeah. on that statement right there, Mr. Well, Ron Whiteman? Do you uh, agree or disagree? Well, there are a few points I was curious about. How can other races help make more white babies? Well, Why was he telling us this? Because they need more of your, your kind, right? We sure do, but and I don't think you can help me. <laughs> no, I can't. I, I can't help you. I can't help you with that and problem that would be right a good there. magic trick. All right. All right, let's get into who we have in the building. I wrote some words down. If you didn't know, you wasn't watching my posts. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook, but you should already know who we have in the studio. So, if you ask me, and many others. This man, in two words, will be passionate and conviction. Just being around him will leave you with a greater sense of purpose. He is known by many in the industry and is well respected. Please salute the ambassador, Mr. Frank Nitty, on Casual Conversations. Frank okay. Nitty, the Don. Casual conversation. How okay. you doing, sir? Not Thank you for good. making some time out your day to come down here and hang out with us. I told you what you got on, I was going to support you, so I'm a man of my word. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So before we get into all these chat GPT questions, how's business? How's everything going on with you? Because I've been watching your Instagram page. I know you and your boys are doing major things. Yes. Is there any new update that you would like the audience to know? Um, other than I graduated from Harvard, being from Long Beach, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know about that, you know, but... Uh, what? What? Back, back that up again? I yes. graduated from Harvard learning blockchain AI technology, you know what I'm saying? Congrats. That's a lot of shit, niggas. I mean, White Harvard! Yeah. 
White Harbor. That's ten dollars in the pot right there. The first East Sider to ever do that, you know what I'm saying? But you know, at the end of the day, it's just uh, my homie Bad came to me in a dream and told me, you know, I was mad because he passed away four years ago, and um, you know, he came to me in a dream, and in my dream, I was mad at him, and he was like, Nah, he was like, Nitty, I'm not dead. I live in the metaverse, and at four years ago, I didn't know what the metaverse was. And then uh, when I went to the Super Bowl, I started doing all kind of research and seeing that the metaverse, you can actually bring people back to life. So I'm saying, and once I went down the rabbit hole, you know, I was like, what? You know what I'm saying? You, you had mentioned this metaverse um, that you was into in previous conversation with myself, but I didn't get down there. You had some property down there. You had a studio down there. What have you been building in this metaverse? Yeah, yeah. So I got I got a metaverse pretty much built, and I'm going to launch it November 25th, which is Badass's birthday. Um, you know, on top of, uh, I got a hologram that I designed, and I got his AI uh, template. So he's actually going to be talking and hosting and performing at his birthday party. You know what I mean? Inside the verse. Inside the inside. No, it's going to be an, it's going to be a hologram. He's going to yeah. be in the club. Okay, okay, okay. Can so I, can how does one have a cop no. arrest him? Huh? No. Nope. Can the hologram of a cop arrest him? Nah, nah, no. Because that well, would be great. Nah. <laughs> you see. So how does one access the metaverse? Do we have to buy the goggles? How do we get there? No, I mean it's different. You know they got different metaverses like the Central Land and all the. Uh, the metaverses that's been built from different races. Okay, you know I like saying? that, I like that. Different races, you know, I mean, some of these people, yeah, you gotta put the goggles on to get that ultimate experience, but mm -hmm. you know, the metaverse that I'm building, you could do it from your phone because of course, you know, there's a lot of people that they're not gonna be able to afford the goggles, especially the Apple goggles, they put them so high, they only wanna tap with the people that got the money and the whole plan is to control our people and get everybody on board so they can control and track us, track everybody's IP. Well, isn't you that know? the way of the world right now? That's no, the it way is. It's, it's just going. making it quicker. You know, we used to talk about this 20 years ago about them putting the chip in us and all that and people, they laughed and they didn't really understand the structure of how it was going to happen but now, I for that. you know what I mean, um, now it's here, you know what I mean? And it's, it's just something that people got to get used to. You know, AI is here, it's going to take over. Like you said, you went to chat GPT and got your questions, your questions you know, and yeah. that's just, you know, that's to me, like, that's like, it's, it's you know, all that all that stuff is making the world lazy. You know what I'm saying? It's cutting it's, corners. It's, it's making but it lazy, what, man. Do you access or do you use AI technology in your business at this point? Um, Besides the metaverse? Yeah. I use it as far as coding. You know what I'm saying? You have to use AI, you know, as far as coding. I, I wouldn't even be able to have badass come in a hologram if I didn't use AI. Okay, know? okay. But there's a, there, there, there's a good way to do it and there's a bad way. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's an authentic way and then there's a lazy way. But, you know, you just got to figure out who's who because these people are really using this. And even in the music industry, you know, they're using AI to take... Like, why should you take Nipsey Hussle and all these different people's voices and utilize it for your own gain if the family don't get no income from it? You know what I mean? So I know they're trying to change the laws about it. Um, you saw what's going on in Hollywood, how these actors are fighting back. They're on because, strike. Yeah, they're on strike. Yeah, because, because what they do stuff. is they pay you for a week and then they get your image. And then what they do is before they pay you the full cut, you know, it's a contract stating that they can use your IP for however they want to use it. So you're actually doing one week's of work, Did but you you're doing, you're, you're doing, good. yeah, you're doing a whole two months of work that you didn't even do. Mm. Yeah. So they're just stretching it out and you know, it's just, I mean, it's you know, the, so are you for it or are you against it? How do you see this playing itself out in the future? I'm for it, I'm for it, but I'm only for it if, if they do the right thing. You know what I mean? I don't feel like you should pay somebody crumbs for a week's worth of work and then stretch them out to two months worth of work without them getting paid anything on the back end. Like I'm not for that. You know, I think that that's wrong. And I think that the people that's creating these AI companies and using this tech, you know, they're using it to control us once again to control our our music industry. You know, yeah, what I'm saying that's that, that yeah, that's where yeah. we're at with this. So speaking back? about music and music industry, gritty style, your label, your company. How long have you had that? When did you establish that? Because you got a nice compound out there. So uh, I'm sorry. yeah, when did you get that, or when did you come up with that? I mean, I used to wrestle, you know, back in. 
the early 90s, you know what I mean? And oh, yeah. style, you know, I created my own style because, you know, I, my record was 210 and 1. And at the time, you know, you, you didn't see too many black people wrestling. So when I came in, you know, it was just like, damn, how did he, you know, how he keep winning? And they tried to study me and I never lifted weights and I never did the things that everybody else did. You know, I used to just do pull-ups, run up the hill, push-ups, take the shovel to the beach, dig 20 holes, you know, swim to the island and little things like that. So I had a natural way, uh, you know, every time I wrestled. So I had a different kind of strength. And once I never lost, you know what I mean? I, you know, 210 and one, you got to do the math on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they like, man, you know, so I, I had my own style. And when I was getting interviewed in Sports Illustrated and things like that, yeah, um, they used to call me nitty gritty because, you know, I got down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Like, yeah. It went from nitty gritty to gritty style. And it just stuck with me. And when Badass got his deal with Snoop Dogg, you know what I mean? He called me Gritty Style, and it just stuck. And you know what I mean? All the way till now, I just created my own movement with it. You know what I mean? So Gritty Style was just uh, something that was identified. Uh, you know, yeah. people identify. Identify with you. So when they say Gritty Style, they're like, "Oh, you part of that movement?" Like we was never a label. Everybody always thought we was a label because how we moved and how we did our own shows and. You know what I'm saying? We fed the homeless for, you know, 20 something years and, you know, took care of the community. We just created our own. You've been name. doing a lot of that philanthropic business out yeah. there in the streets. And, like I said, you're the ambassador. And one thing I did notice with you and your whole movement that you have not only blacks on the team, but you have a strong presence in the Latino community to yeah. the point where you got a, a, a protege. How's yeah. Blue doing? How's his business doing? He's doing great. He's probably one of the best Latino artists you'll probably hear from the West Coast. You know what I mean? I've been developing him since he was like 12, 13 years old. So, yeah. you know, he's always been a fun project because, you know, we do have black and brown issues on the West Coast. And, and you know, how the government has it is, you know, they want us to fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's been a lot of bloodshed. Yeah, it's been a lot of bloodshed. So I just, you know, I'm like, you know what? If I ever get any kind of power, I'm going to bring both cultures together and do something that hasn't been done. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm doing now. You know Call what I'm them wet blacks. Yeah. You know <laughs> no. what I mean? This guy funny right here. <laughs> he trying he try to throw jazz. Yeah. yeah. It's too yeah. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, when the, when the conversation authentic, uh, uh, white man Ron, you're going to have to just sit back, listen, because the pigmentation of, of the skin that you have, it just, it doesn't fit for the society of where the future is going. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I feel offended. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to take you to Farrakhan House, man. And, oh, no. You know, and try to have you, uh, you know, give his kids some pork sandwiches or something and see what Hell happens. So, buddy. do you manage? you manage? Uh, what is your role here? Because you play many roles. You have yeah. hands in a lot of people's business out here. Are you a manager or producer? You know, I, you I help a lot of artists. I manage a lot of artists, but I don't do it on paperwork. I just don't believe in that. I, I believe more like I'm going to just help you get to the level. And it's just like, you know, how Barry Gordy and a lot of people used to do back in the days is this, you just got to show people how to do certain things. You know what I mean? Like um, Michael Jackson didn't have paperwork. You know what I'm saying? When he, he didn't? Nah. Nah. Nah, you didn't have no paperwork. Like It was a handshake. So uh -huh. you do a lot of handshake business. I as just far depending as on what kind of souls it is. I don't. I, I just don't feel like paperwork is necessary if there ain't no real money involved. You know what I'm saying? And that's just always been my philosophy. I'm not like, you know, the culture vultures of the industry. Contracting you know is a slippery slope. But yeah. you know, business wise, you know, like on on different levels, you know, I believe in paperwork for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because this game is so trickery. But as far as helping artists get to the next level, I'm not finna. I'm not finna have no paperwork to manage them. Yeah. It's just not. I seen that you um, you had mentioned Nip, and um, when he had passed, mm -hmm. you had put a clip out on your Instagram, and you said your two cents. What was your relationship with him? Did he come out here and hang out at the studio with you? Did you? Did you um, he never. He never hung out at the studio. No? But um, oh, I did. I did. Used to have him perform at some of my shows. I used to throw network parties. So I've been throwing network parties for about 17, 18 years. I let everybody in free. I always uh, feed people for free. I never charge nobody, but I used to have like different celebrities, like, you know, uh, people from Bone Thugs and yeah. Mac 10 oh, and DJ nice. Quick and all, you know, all, all the legend homies. And Nipsey was one of those ones that was blowing up at the time. And, you know, I used to have him come through and, you know, perform. 
and then he was always on the crypto before a lot of people so him and uh badass you know they they was on their crypto game but uh you know the vibe was real good he was real intelligent to me you know what i'm saying and you know you get you 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 run across a lot of people in the music game but very few people really have that intellect man you know what i mean and i always respected him because we we kind of like the same like i don't like joking like all yeah. that shit. i like i don't we didn't got time to joke man yeah. we either got to get rich we got to get our people on point because at the end of the day, if we don't get serious, I mean, we're going to get swept under the rug. Swept for under the rug. And they don't understand the population control is already here. You know what I'm saying? There are, you know, you got people like uh, China that, that bought Africa. You know what I mean? Yeah. People have been trying to buy Africa for years, and how did China end up buying it? So that's just letting you know that, you know, once these people control the Mother Earth, then they're going to control the world. And we got to understand satellites and everything that they're doing to um, put in the air to, you know, block our third eyes and stuff like that. You so know? you speak a lot of religious. Do you identify with any particular religious group? Well, I studied, I've never I, asked I, you that. A lot of people haven't. They'd be like, you know, I, I just, I tell you this. I, I'm not, I, I love all religions. I love their stories, whether they're folklore or true. You know what I mean? But I, um, my religion to me is karma. You know I believe my religion is karma. So that's why I always give back and do good things to people because that's going to come back to me. So if I do something bad, it's going to come back to me. That's why I always tell the homies, if you cheat on your girl, when she cheat on you, don't get mad. You're not supposed to get mad because you've been cheating on her. Yeah. So if she cheat on you, why are you going to break down and cry? You know, if you go gangbang and shoot somebody or do this and do that. So if something happens to somebody in your family, you can't get mad. Yeah. Now, you know, that's why people always talk about love. Love don't have none of that. When you have love, you don't care about races or none of that. Because there's only one race, and that's the human race. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to go by religion, you know, uh, the devil was casted on, on earth. So really, this is his place. So when we die, why are we crying? We're going back home. You know, we just came here temporarily to lead by example and then leave. That's by it. example. Do we all get to go? Mm -hmm. No, nah, I don't think everybody goes back to a good place. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean... There's different dimensions and it. You know, you get a choice, you know, what you do on earth. You know what I mean? I feel like, you know, when you're on earth, you got wings. And if they don't spread at a certain time, when it's time for you to pass, how are you going to fly to the next dimension? Like, how are you going to go there? That was deep right there. That's very interesting. Yo, very Eric, interesting. it's coming up on the half. Just want some uh, ads and we come right back. We have Frank Nitty in the building, that casual conversation. I go by the name Mike Flex. And um, that guy over there, he's going by the name of Ron Whiteman. Get it right person of color thank yes, you yes uh he identifies as ron whiteman so let's get into this ads real quick oh this one on the screen i really like this one this is 17th watches by chris johnson i'm promoting 17th watch by chris johnson they offer affordable or stylish timepieces i re recommend checking their instagram or facebook page or their website for their weekly specials using code 1v2 at checkout Look at that one, that's so crisp on the screen right there. 17th watches, that's one V2 at checkout. Enjoy the shopping, 17th watches by Chris Johnson. I need that credit. Uh, number two, if you're looking for a website and social media manager, Porsche Creations might be able to assist you. She specializes in custom funeral programs, booklets, designs, and offer additional services. I sure services. would like some of that. No, you don't. Mr. Whiteman, calm down. You can reach her via email or pirvin at consultant.com. Best 30 seconds of your life. Man, <laughs> connect with her on Instagram, <laughs> create to inspire to ultimate, ult I feel alternatively, like it's you can connect with her on the phone at 951-667-5446. She will be able to provide you further information and discuss your specific needs. That's 951-667-5446. Five four four six. Gotcha. That's Porsche gotcha. Creations. Email at pirvin at consultant dot com. And uh, oh, this ad right here is by us. So if you want to get on the show, ads, I got a link right there. You can text us. We start at a reasonable rates. Mm. Good exposure, one hundred and fifty k listeners. So if you have a business and you need some exposure, reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, myself or Ron Whiteman. We will write you yes, in and, and get into it. All right. That's them. So we have Frank Nitty in the building. We have Mr. Ron Whiteman in the building. Uh, Mr. Whiteman. Yes. If you was 
a seasoning, what flavor would you be? Hmm, that's kind of hard because we don't use seasoning. <laughs> So, Haven't you tasted our chicken? It's, have, you, have you heard? I've heard no, about no, Ralph Albans and things of that nature. If you was salt, pepper, what would you be? What kind of condiment would you be? Mayonnaise. Okay, okay, see, see. So you are, you are almost there. I'm okay, next there. question, Mr. Ron Whiteman, to test your Whiteman. Um, if you could invent a holiday, what would the name of the holiday be? Mr. Whiteman, let's test your white skills. Let me see. My own holiday. Yes. Holiday. What would you celebrate? Do I have to have Negroes there? It's your holiday. What do you want? Wow. Well, well, that's the holiday then. <laughs> no Negro holiday? No brown. Can't get down. No black. Take it back. All right. Okay. Enough for you. Frank, you said you had a song for us. You want to let us know what the song is and then we can chop it up who you got yeah this song is called the nerve by my protege young gritty and we got sly piper which is uh, uh one of uh dr dre's ghost writers and uh he's an excellent excellent artist you know what i mean and you're about to hear it right now and is this song featured on his upcoming album is already available on spotify all that good stuff yeah people can find it and go stream it so it's on all the platforms yeah, but we will be shooting a video for it you know what i mean and, you gonna like it. All right, let's let's listen, listen to that track and come right back. Rabbity hibbity hubbity. Some hibbity hop. Why they in the streets full of fake rappers and they lies If I set a car to body, I'm in it in my rhymes I ain't never been a killer, but I murdered y'all I make it hotter than a stove when the oven on All my independent crime labels only 1% of your money I ain't quick to put my name on dotted lines If it ain't about a million or more to that I might invest it in the property and double that See, I'm a dog, I ain't nothing like the mother cats Out of this planet, where the fuck I was discovered at Keeping it gritty, 150 was born in the city You're toting a million, sipping the henny Before I'm a nitty, I was headed down the wrong road But I'm glad that I'm here I made it so now they ask Gritty, how do you feel? I feel like I'm on a level they don't want me to be. That's how I go when you label the G. Go with the pen and I know that they feel it. They probably get finished. Cause everything that I say up on the record, I meant it. Remember the name ahead of the game was never the same. Who let this young man, he kind of up on the stage. Give a who they want me to be. Oh, they sleeping on me? It don't matter, let them they sleep. Damn, look, I'm still holding the key. Deep down on all these little rappers want to be me. The you. Yeah. You know I set the bars on fire when I burn the boot. Yeah. Yeah. You know I set the bar so high coming after me In the path you see A copy masterpiece Your audacity The nerve of you Don't wanna see You don't wanna see what this can turn into oh, But I'll give it to you If you have to see But you won't last for free A copy masterpiece The audacity See nobody in my era that be killing with the pen and with the lyrics Never understood the gimmick or the image that these rappers wanna mimic I know they gon' be offended if the critics I'm a representative till no longer living I'ma hit them with the flow to make them go Run up in the building, take the money and the go. I been independent making money on the low Yeah, you got a million views, but you really living broke Wake up in the morning, I gotta go get the bag Caught up in the moment, you know that it never lasts I have been on the grind, they wanna bring it to pass I been running them numbers of your new album in the trash Using my mind as a weapon to murder the negative energy Give a f what they telling me like I'm catching a felony I don't know, but they better be prepared when it come The devil be trying to plot with his venomous tongue I'm in a boot with God, it's food for thought I'm in an old school, blunted in the roof is gone My troops is on with guns that'll shoot through cars Invade your block with beans like we came from Mars Getting paid for the rhymes that I write for y'all This mic is on, I spoke my whole Life through bars in the zone Give you the feeling like your life is lost They couldn't see me on the mic like they sight was off The nerve of you yeah. You know I set the bars on fire when I burn the boot yeah. Yeah. You know I set the bars so high coming after me In the path you seek A copy masterpiece The audacity The nerve of you Don't wanna see You don't wanna see what this can turn into so the title of that was the nerve the nerve featuring sly piper sly piper was singing on the hook and of course it's they're a, very musical people right? young gritty one of the baddest uh lyrically 
I, I have always respect him. And the last time I seen him, he had a beard now. So you said you was, you've been a, a mentoring him since he was 12 years old. He ain't 12 no more. He's a grown man, got a big old beard. So that's mm -hmm. dope. That's a dope track. And you can find that on his uh, Instagrams. Well, typing, you know, typing Young Gritty. Young Gritty, you're going to find him here. Uh, I was looking over these questions, and then this was a good one right here. Um, you was mentioned, I, well, I brought it up to Nipsey, but I want your most memorable experience collaborating with another artist or, you know, or entertainer. Who was your go-to guy? Like, this was the guy or gal, and I didn't imagine it, but we finally doing something together. Oh, man, Jesus, from the past or yeah, to, past until, until who's, now. You, who's your guy? Who's your favorite? My favorite, most memorable, I should say. Uh, dead or alive? Yeah. Mm. He has to sit back and think because I've come through your spot and I've seen a, a lot of faces that I see on TV. Like, oh, they're here. Oh, no, I think I had the most fun with Nate Dog. Wow, <laughs> Nate Dog. I think I had the most fun with him. You know that we had a. A lot, a lot of great, great memories. We made a lot of money together. I love those Negro rap you know names. <laughs> Nate Dizzy. Yeah, I love Nate Dog. Man. I mean, just the whole experience, I think, with the Dog Pound and Badass. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? Just uh, maybe Alicia Keys, I would think. Uh, oh, that's nice. I've met uh, I've met Jay-Z before. Uh, that was mm -hmm. kind of cool. I mean, I mean, I think I met it pretty much everybody. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, You're not moving to New York anytime soon, right? You're not going to leave us and move to Atlanta. Nah, right? nah, I ain't, okay, I'm, okay. I'm here. I'm here to stay. You're here to stay. Yeah. Um, what's another one I was looking at here? Was um, you do a lot of mentorship. Do you yeah. find that taking up a lot of your time? Are you still open for that? Is that part of what you do? Because I'm just natural. I'm a natural leader, so, you know, I can mentor anybody, you know what I'm saying? I just got to have a conversation with you and figure out your energy. Your energy. And I go off energy, you know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of, unfortunately, it's a lot of homies that either they lost or they ain't. And if they are lost and I feel like they don't have no knowledge on wherever they're trying to go in their life, I feel like, you know, you hang around me enough, you're going to learn that, you know what I mean? And um, so I'm a natural mentor, but as far as, like, kids and going to, like, uh, the juvenile halls and talking like that, I feel like... That's a passion of mine because a lot of them kids, if they don't get the right guidance, you know, all they're going to do is get out here and, you know, do what, what, what the devil want them to do and control them. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's create more chaos for the community so we could be looked at by people. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. not even knowing, like, we're great people, but we just had a wrong, uh, we have the wrong guidance. So would this be some of your like, great advice? to aspiring artists would you do that what would your advice be to aspiring artists and entertainers sign the contract would you say okay let's let me rephrase the question no drug tell them go major or would you tell these guys to stay independent i mean it all depends i mean you know um if you got a good following and you know how to capitalize off your following i would say stay independent but if you don't have no following and you dope and you know a major's offering you a lot of money i would say you know take that route because if you got families to feed and you know you got rent you know you can't tell a broke person uh you know uh, you don't tell them to turn down no money yeah you know true man? so because the rent got to get paid you know and a lot of these people out here they're like oh i'm not gonna sign no deal but if he offering you a million dollars homie and you you know you got a family you got four or five kids man and all y'all sleeping in somebody's garage you know what I'm saying? Why wouldn't you take that money? Do you feel that same way with these cats nowadays that are selling their catalogs? Because, you know, ownership is big within our community. We're trying to own everything. I, but late, as of late, a lot of cats have been selling their catalogs. I say get your money by any means because I'm going to tell you why. Uh, cash of society is coming. You know, money's not going to be an option no more. Everything is going digital. So the Bitcoin and all these kind of digital currencies is you coming. You heard it here. You know what I mean? So... I mean, whatever. If they giving you anything like fifty million, a hundred million, two hundred million, take it. You know what I mean? Some take people, because all you could do is just read. You know, for certain people though, you know, I wouldn't say. Uh, you know, I seen Dr. Dre sell his catalog. Are you you think? know, his old catalog. Oh, okay. Okay. He sold his old catalog, but you gotta understand this, man. A lot of these musicians, you know, they was on drugs when they did that. You know what I mean? They they wasn't in their right state of mind. So sometimes you just want to flush all that old stuff down the toilet and come brand new again. You know what I mean? I know if I had a lost state of mind and somebody offered me two, three hundred million dollars for my catalog, I'm gonna sell it quick. 
So you you, you started off that statement. If I had a lost state of mind, if I had a lost state of mind, I said it. You know, when I made a lot of that music, because at the end of the day, it's it's, it's Sodom and Gomorrah mentality. You know, and and some people say, oh no, you can make more money. Well, shit, go make it. You know what I mean? That's what you're getting paid so much money up front. Let them do the work. You know what I mean? So you can always make new music if it's in you. You know what I mean? So it's really where your mentality is when you know when the offer comes. Are you going by like? Because I I. I I could, would consider you like a mogul in our area. Would you accept that type of title? I definitely will. And I plan on being a billionaire within the next two years. I have a plan of becoming a billionaire. Okay. I'll uh, be a billionaire for sure. I'm already working on different technologies. I'm uh, sure you will, buddy. co-founder of like seven different uh, digital companies. Uh, you know, it's all coming together for me, man. And, you know, I just got my first house, you know what I'm saying? Oh, congrats. 45 square, 100 What's the feet. address? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. I'm in the cut, man. man. That's good. You know, uh, it's, out here, it's, it's out here in the area? Not, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's an area. Yeah, okay, sure. cool, 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 cool. So yeah. it's not no, uh, nah, Arizona, you got some. Nah, nah, nah I'm here. I, I ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go nowhere. There's too many people that I love out here that need help. You know what I mean? I feel like if I was to really go somewhere that I really want to go, um, you know, it's just be a whole bunch of lost homies. You know, have saying? you uh, been paying attention to the uh, hip hop scene or the new rappers that's from our area? It's the trash, styly. It's trash. Yeah. All this music is trash. They're uh, turning you into. I was gonna ask. Better. Better. I was gonna ask you what was your temperature and the take on it's it. Trash. It's trash. All right. So what All did it, what is it trash. off the rail? Where did it go left? Uh, that's a good question, but. Because we can't, if they, they, they are our children, we can't just say that stuff is trash. It is trash. I like it. Well, you know, it's you trash. Might not listen to it. Nah, that's trash. Come on, break the shit down. Uh, hey, break it down. Dump again. Break it down. Break $20. It down. Got break. you drinking and drugs and shit, break it. and it's great. Break it down, man. If, listen to the message that these people put now. You tell me You tell me that's not trash. Okay, but isn't that argument that it should be a healthy balance? What kind of healthy balance? Well, know. you have the backpack style, then you have the gangster rap. You did from our era. There ain't you no had a balance. balance. I, I but thought now you were talking about like popular more. music. No. Well, yeah, that too. There, there, ain't ain't no, but there ain't no popular backpack music. That's all underground. They keep it there for a reason. Now, I'm talking about the music that's making money and that, that's getting mm. monetized and got a lot of followers and a lot of people supporting it. Yeah. That's trash music. I would say 90% of it's trash. There is people like Nas and, you know, uh, some of the people that, you know, like J. Cole, you know, Kendrick Lamar. You know, people that's talking vision in their music, there's not very few of them left, you know what I mean? And and don't so, get me wrong, don't get me wrong, I love gangster music, I love the street stuff. You gotta get shot to be you know good. I, mean? I loved all I love all that because I lived it, you know what I'm saying? That's my lifestyle, but we are living in the age of technology. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Why I don't I don't I don't wanna listen to that no more. I wanna listen to how much property you got, is your credit good? You but does that translate to the younger generation? You yeah, know? Nipsey, Nipsey, did it. Nipsey well, did it. Nipsey was talking about, but he, he was, was talking about ownership to his music. fruition of full grown in his thirties. Because he read we, books, we cannot he read expect books. that from a, the new latest guy, seventeen years old. You know, um, young boy. You know why? It's because you know why? It's because there ain't no leadership. It goes all back to leadership. Like you gotta, you got people say they love Nipsey Hussle. How can you actually? fully say that when you're going you're going against everything that he talked about and rapped about you mm. know what I'm wow he was about ownership but you love nipsey you got him tattooed on your arm but you're not trying to get your credit up you ain't trying to own nothing you know what i mean okay. you're going to totally against what he's saying so some of these artists that passed away that's trying to give us game and some of the you know some of the real leaders like you know um malcolm x and martin luther king and different people like that they die for nothing they die for nothing because nobody's learning from that like how many more people are we gonna keep dying? Like Nipsey, he died in front of our face, yeah, on camera. Do you think social media has a play into the, the degradation that we're talking about? Oh, like yeah. they, they glorify it. You know what I mean? Just like TikTok. You know, TikTok was made in China. You know, they, it, it was used to glorify the good things that they did. Mm. Out there, they use TikTok. Your algorithm opens up when you do good stuff. Out here, your algorithm opens up when you do bad stuff. You know what I mean? So, so it's, it's all a plot. Thing. Yeah, it's all a plot. And people don't understand that. You know what I mean? A lot of these platforms don't even, they're not even for our culture. It's of other course, cultures that they own. Don't, we don't own it. You know what I mean? We're happy because we got 100 likes. Some people happy because 
You know what I mean? They got a million views and you know what I'm saying? They only get like $900 off that. When really the, the advertisement behind that, they're getting a lot more money. People don't even understand monetization no more. So you know, that's why everybody's gone. faking views because they want to feel important and we're lost. You know, we, we get, you know, we get sad. You post something important, don't nobody, nobody, don't nobody like, like your stuff. Nah, I'm fortunate. You go though. live, you only have one person going live. Like, mm -hmm. come on, bro. That, that, that messes with your mind state sometimes and people think like, I have to do this, I have to do that. Even well, like those, the those are called shenanigans. You know what I mean? You know how much money they made because they, they uh, made the blue check available for $10 a month? Oh yeah. They yeah, made a because everybody felt like, oh man, I feel I can feel important now. Yeah. So you don't subscribe to none of that. No blue no, checks, I don't do no that. fake views. Nah. I, 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 or, or I delete my page. I delete it after so many followers. I delete it and start over. Oh. Because that none of that runs me. It doesn't run who I am. I barely even be posting. You yeah. Know? No, I really don't. And if I do see you posting it, it's post you it posting your artists. Yeah, I don't like or, nobody even know what I'm doing. It's it's like so you could track me down. You know, if I really posted what I was doing, people be calling my phone a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, call my phone on a natural, man. Come, you know, yeah. don't don't because I'm chilling over here with Elon Musk and I'm doing business deals with Microsoft. Did you just drop Elon you Musk? Know what I'm saying? And, you sure uh, did. You know, I got partnerships with MMA companies and stuff like that. Don't don't call me because of that. Hey, I did see that. So, um, Young is performing inside the cage. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's a, and it is like a, the Octagon, or, you know what I'm no, saying? No, it's an MMA company, so we have a new uh, company called Up Next Fighting, <clears throat> and uh, what we do is we cater to the new generation of fighters, and we teach them how to monetize um, their image, monetize oh. their clothes, and we get them prepared for the big leads. It's just like the same as in the music oh. industry. You know what I mean? In our production, we st we're on pay-per-view. So it's like an A&R business. You, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's, it's all perfect. It's the same quality as you will find on UFC. The mm -hmm. same production. It's real big. We sell out every show. You know what I mean? And we're trying to do a partnership with uh, Pachanga, which uh, it looked like it's going to go through. So the beginning of uh, the first quarter of next year, we're going to start doing our fights at Pachanga. Oh, you know, God willing. You know. hey. Are you, you going to get back into the ring? I might, yeah. Ah. I mean, if it's, you know, I feel like. I have wrestled. I, like I, 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 I don't know. I've wrestled. I've yeah. wrestled with some some big buff guys. You know what I'm saying? And they can't. They can't fuck with me. I mean, they can't mess with me. That's thirty dollars. You can't help yourself. That's can you? thirty dollars, folks. That's ten dollars. Kiss your mother with right that there. mouth. <laughs> so uh, okay. So with that, what's new on the horizon? What can we expect from you? Is for the uh, remaining part of this year, so I can keep up on it. Well, I gotta. Uh, let me see. What's a few things I could tell you? Because I did sign NDAs, but what I will tell you is uh, I have a new digital uh, distribution platform, and Ooh. what that does is it, it's kind of like a distro kit, but like on steroids, so I could put you, I could put people's music in 180 stores, right, traditional, and then I could put you on all the NFT market stores, and then I could put you in the prison system, but it has to be clean music. So I have all these three outlets in one platform. Um, I have that. Um, I'm doing... Uh, I got a CMOS uh, dog food that's finally done. I got the um, the CMOS, uh, the New Life CMOS uh, Viagra. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're starting a uh, we're starting a uh, another warehouse. I'm moving my warehouse from um, LA to Victorville. You know what I mean? So I could be closer out here to the IE. Um, I got another studio. Speaking of that CMOS, you've been doing that for a while, and yeah. it's, it's actually what they say it is. It's everything they say it is. So I've been selling. Uh, I don't even promote it no more. I don't have to promote it. I don't have a website. Um, I, I just do it all word of mouth. You know, we're selling 3,000 jars a week, and then that's it. So I sell 3,000 jars, and I don't, hmm. you know, people got to wait till the next CMOS, and that's yeah. that Dr. Sabi. Yeah, I was inspired by Dr. Uh, Sabi, yeah. Okay, for sure. Okay, okay. So it's 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 growing, man. Yeah, everything's growing. Yeah, yeah, everything's growing. Um, I just uh, we're also doing a movie on um, badass. Oh, now that's gonna we're be doing dope. a movie on him from through my eyes. Um, I'm also doing Good question this. between you and badass because you had mentioned him a couple times, and that's how I got to know him through you or meet him through you. Yeah, you guys went to grade school together. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've, been knowing, I've been knowing Badass probably about like 30 years. Probably. He's the coolest cat. The uh, coolest cat. He was man. the coolest cat. He was never like celebrity out, even though it was never like, out. You're that guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, he was he was different, man. He's the one who brought me into the music industry. That's why I pushed so hard for him, and mm -hmm. you know that was a that was the whole reason why I even went to Harvard. You know what I mean? It, and it was it was hard for me because, you know, I was scared. You know what I mean? You know, I didn't I didn't think that. You know, I always knew I was smart, but I was like, man, I'm finna take these tests, and you know, Harvard's like one of the biggest colleges you can go to, and you know, my teacher. Just me being from Long Beach and being, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How'd you Growing up in the hood, I, I applied. <laughs> you know, wow. anybody can apply. You just got to pass. That's shocking. You got to pass the test. And, you know, being that I'm black and brown, you know, they have a lot of grants for, you know, the lower class citizens. And, mm. you know, they don't expect people like us to apply, especially so. in the technology world. You know what I mean? But I'm real good. I got a good memory. I'm good at math. And, um, you know, I just looked at it like a challenge. So all the different long questions that they gave me, I passed them. So and, you said Harvard. You, did you have to join some uh, Skull and Bones fraternity to, uh, you know, I heard you really do. guys down at Harvard are part of that secret society. Any secret um, handshakes well, or anything? Because Harvard, like Harvard has the richest, like the richest of the richest people on earth. They send their kids to Harvard. And, you know, it's just like when you go to any other school, you, you join frats and mm -hmm. things like that. And certain frats is a bunch of people that talk about the end of the world stuff you know uh some people talk about space and you know they talk about aliens aliens been here for a long time and so you and, believe in aliens yeah i, I definitely believe in something different oh from my humans. goodness yeah. so you know this week that the government was talking about that you get an opportunity to all check the whistleblowers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, i mean how you think nasa was formed you know nasa was formed after they they you know the uh, germans you know an alien crashed and they got the technology from that, oh. and all the German scientists started NASA uh, right after. Operation right, Paperclip. So, exactly. So Blue as game. a person that is 100% spiritual and has an open mind on everything that's going on in the world, let me ask you this serious question. Mm -hmm. How, if they showed the dead bodies of these aliens, all these, shi uh, all these ships, does that change your faith? in the creator does that change your religion idea does it set it on a reset what would you how would you take that would it shake you shake you to the core well i think religion is is it's made you know religion is a man-made thing to control our people you know what i mean and, and if it is true and when it does happen it's definitely going to contradict everything that they're talking about in the bible but there is different little secrets so you got to look at it like the bible um it's all just stories, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of stories that a lot of, they didn't get a chance to make the Bible, just like the L.A. Times. Mm -hmm. The L.A. Times cover L.A. and all that, but they didn't talk about this or they didn't talk about that. They always talk about things that's going to make people want to buy, you know, the L.A. Times, you know. But there's a lot of stories like Jesus. He wasn't even documented until he was 33 years old. What happened when he, you know, when he was a kid? They missed out all that. What happened when he was 12 years old? Did he get into fights? Sacrifice did he eat? to the did ecumenical politics. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what did he do? They didn't do nothing. They didn't, yeah. they didn't, you didn't know nothing about him until he was 33. Well, they say, but you have to go so to another those book. You have to go he, to a he, different he, book to find Yeah, out. that's what I'm saying, but it's not in the Bible. No, you know, so it's the same thing with that. You know, they're, they're going to tell you that, you know, the Nephilims and all that stuff came down to earth and, you know, things like that. But it's not going to be put in terms where we Isn't can really an alien? learn from it that is an alien yeah yeah that's an alien a nephilim is an alien it's just a different terminology you know what i'm saying so i mean i i'm i'm open to anything you know what i'm saying i'm open to anything but i do know the truth from my experience and i read a lot i don't go online i like to read old books i like to i like to um go to some old libraries you know the yeah. old ancient books i even like to travel you know, that's where you get your best knowledge. That's why they say you have to be a traveling man because you have to go to different parts of the world and, and suck in that knowledge. You ever read the you Emerald know? Tablets? I've heard about it. I haven't read it. I haven't read it, but I have. I've, I've put it like this. I've seen the documentary about it. Mm -hmm. So it's different from reading it because, of course, you know, they're going to. But, I mean, I got a good perception of, of it. Yeah, the last two plates are about you uh, colored people and it's pretty amazing. You know yeah. a lot well, about see, black people, Mr. Warren White. Mr. Yes, I do. I've spent a lot of well, time in see, prison, so I see, I, it's so the best place the, to find you. So let me, let me, you spent time in prison. Let me, let me yes, I did. I owned one. Let me tell you about the white people because the white people are just pigmented people that lived in the Caucasus Mountains, but at the end of the day, they, they, they are black too. I don't know about that, buddy. Oh. Hey, 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 watch it, 
Yeah. Every, it, every, so every race has got a little black in them. So Frank, you oh, um, God, you said you, you you travel to um, get more perspective on life. Yeah. What was what is one of the places you like to go to? Or you've been to outside of California that you said I How like about this. Fantasyland. Um, probably Egypt. Oh, you went back all the way back. Yeah, Egypt. Was uh, it like an eye-opening situation for you? Like it just perspective smells like different smells. It opens up your, you know, your nose, and when your nose is open, your eyes open. You know, certain sounds, bird sounds, chirping, the vibe, the energy. You know, you take your shoes major. off. Take your shoes off. You you know, walk into the Mother Earth sand. Oh so, like yeah, that. you got to connect it. You were right back to yeah. Go touch the trees. You know, some of those trees have been here longer than humans. So. You gotta understand the energy that that provides, and I think before humans even came on Earth, it was trees and water and all that type of stuff. So, when you could tap into that kind of uh, uh, element, then it's gonna change your mind on a whole nother level. That's why I say I take hip hop serious because this is all we have left. You know, all we have left is to speak. So why speak poison when you can speak the truth and use your uh, intellect to to make it um, hip? So you don't have it. Do you have any uh, faith in the future of hip hop? Um, yeah, people keep so supporting artists like Young Gritty and Kendrick Lamar's and the J. Cole's. I, I feel like there is a future, but I believe that, um, you know, there's going to be a whole new generation waking up, you know what I mean? And uh, that's why my son, Unity, he's three years old. You know, I'm training him now because I know where the future is going to go. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, I will just say this, you know. Stick around people that got that energy, homie, I mean, that you don't find in too many people because there ain't going to be too many people left. You know what I mean? Voltron, that cartoon, that was a real cartoon. We got to get up on our stuff, you know, and use your social media platforms to Voltron unite. That you got you hmm. What do you mean? Huh? What do you mean about that? Like Voltron? Voltron was all colors. It came together to fight the forces of evil. It was one of the best cartoons back in the 80s, uh -huh. and, you know, the, the early 80s, yeah. 90s. Yeah, and, the new and, episode had a black guy in it. I was like, I kind of was wondering what was going on. You know on. a lot about black people, Mr. Ron Whiteman. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I just feel like we need to get a little more serious because um, when, the, when the equator shifts, you know what I mean, and everything reboots, Bullshit. yeah, a lot of people are going to get caught in a the struggle. They're yeah, going to get go. caught, it's and it's going to come. It's happened about 2,000 times so far. It's going to come. The polar shift. Yes. Okay. The magnetics of the planet will change, and where the North Pole is will be the South Pole. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna so get. It's, it's a gonna reset. Is gonna catastrophic. Be it's gonna get catastrophic. We'll be all right. We got caves and sugar stored, and oh. so so so. You guys got forty. So with you becoming white this morning, that was part of your white package. Hey, you got the. the you got, got the phone call, and I was like, yes, indeedy, doodly. <laughs> Yeah, Will you be showing up anywhere this week, Mr. Ron Whiteman? Um, probably it's uh, the bank, <laughs> I imagine. So yeah, look, November 25th, I'm doing uh, Badass's Hologram birthday party in Vegas. Um, I will have people from Microsoft and some of the biggest technology companies there because what I'm doing is something they never thought could be done from somebody like me. Yeah. And um, it is very, I'm very, uh, too. yeah, it's going to be something very, it's going to be big, man. And you can also stream it in the metaverse for people that can't come. So, you know, just follow me. I just can't have a conversation with you, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight no, that's up. That's what we're supposed you know, to do. I just want to catch up with you, give you your flowers yeah. and your roses. I appreciate that. And allow us to get on the air. And Show us a fancy about. Negro handshake when, before you guys leave. I Show us how you shake hands. <laughs> So oh, shout outs. Oh, I, I gotta give a shout out real quick. Um, my daughter, happy birthday to Zion. She'll be turning 21 this weekend. I'm kind of bummed out because uh, that's my only kid and now she's grown, but she's doing fantastic. Shout out to everybody job. that follow me. Keep following me. Keep Frank following. Nitty underscore Gritty Style on IG. Uh, just follow me, Frank Nitty Gritty Style. I got a lot, a lot of great news that uh, I'm going to be announcing very, very soon. It's going to be and mind blowing. His energy is real. See how we were soaking it up? And this is every time I meet this guy, this guy just the same thing to me. Uplifts oh, my spirit. It's only gonna get better, man. Just keep following. I got a lot of great things, and uh, you know, God bless everybody that really understands with a third eye. That's right. That's right. Uh, Mr. White man, I don't know. You got a white page? Here? I was very impressed by you, people of color, and I didn't know you were smart. I'm really shocked. That's casual conversation, Mike but Flex and Ron Whiteman. See you in two and two. You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1058. Hello, listener behind. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? 
Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the Boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. When life has knocked you down, pick yourself up with Bootstraps and Bra Straps. Get your copy at www.SheilaMack.com today. Good morning, Suzanne. Look, I, this is a Catholic calendar. Oh, how Shane, exceptional. A uh, bumper sticker. Wow. Uh, Nonviolence is a family value. And uh, several sets of rosary beads. Well, you he's know, he's very, very he's Catholic. Martin Sheen. Oh, Martin Sheen. <laughs> he was in your house. He did touched you, your stuff. Did you think I was going to explode? Can you believe I waited until? Okay. Because we, we've known. I just didn't want to jinx it. I was yeah. too. All right. Uh, you've got to get this happy hour. Uh, he's the most amazing man it's in the world. And then he wanted to hang out. He's like, can we watch Rachel Maddow? Oh, we got pictures of that. I'm like, I got to watch Rachel Maddow with, with President Martin. Bartlett and talking. pretend that he's really the real president. president. Yes, president. exactly. I was texting all of my friends last night going, I'm watching Rachel Maddow with President Bartlett. I'm watching Ooh. Rachel Maddow with President Bartlett. That's like a name liberal wet dream, uh, man. That's this, awesome. His uh, book oh. Along the Way, Martin Sheen and Emmanuel Estevez. Get it? Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. So you're going so far up in the world, Stephanie. I can't. Right. I'm Martin Sheen, You're in Martin Sheen's seat. I'm touching it. Yeah. Touching it. Okay. And guess and uh, the new season of uh, Grace and Frankie drops today. Today. Mm -hmm. Bam. Bam. Kind of good timing. Everybody. Great stories. All your famous people are doing Great stories well. about that, about the West Wing, about Apocalypse Now. Oh, wow. Too much art. This is Judge Herb Dodell. The show is called For the People because it's for you, the people. The goal of the show really is to give you information and guidelines in case you are confronted with a situation that falls into one of these categories. And the categories are very broad. It's basically everything. If you have any questions about any of this, contact me at askjudgeherb at gmail.com. I'll try to respond. The book is called from the trench to the bench, the radio show, this show, is on iHeartRadio. Hi everyone, it's me, Sheila Mack, from The Sheila Mack Show. If you are looking to boost your team's performance and achieve life-changing results, tune into my show for a special interview this week with Bill Storm, the National Peak Performance Trainer for Tony Robbins. Do you want to learn how to take your life and career to the next level? Well, I have some great news for you. I am thrilled to announce that in addition to my show interview with Bill, I also have arranged a special live Zoom training for you and your team. To register, see the banner on KCAA or go to SheilaMack.com and look on the top menu for the Tony link. Yes, you will be able to register for a live Zoom specialized training just for you and your team. This is completely free of charge. You'll learn to execute Tony Robbins' proven strategies for success. Take the Wheel of Life assessment to close gaps. Learn pattern-breaking techniques to determine clear targets. Complete a goal-setting exercise and more. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to learn from one of the best in the business. Register now for the live Zoom training with myself and Bill Storm on Tuesday, February 28th at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, once you're registered, you will also have access to the recording. However, I would love to see you live and bring your questions to the live. 
that's where you will get some answers. See you there. See the link in my show notes or go to SheilaMack.com for the Tony link in the menu. I give you my full commitment along with Tony and Bill Storm that this event will be the best training you've participated in all year to produce next level results for you personally and per This is Fred Lundgren and welcome to my journey to the center of the truth. The question we all have as we grow old, are we doing more building or are we doing more wrecking? This poem speaks to that. I saw them tearing a building down. They were a gang of men in a busy town. With a yo heave ho and a lusty yell, they swung a beam and a sidewall fell. I asked the foreman, are these men skilled? Are they skilled as the men you'd hire if you were to build? <laughs> they laughed and said, oh no indeed, for common labor is all we need. For we can easily wreck in a day or two what it's taken builders years to do. So I asked myself as I went my way, which of these two roles am I to play? Am I a builder who builds with care? and measures life with the ruling square? Or am I just a wrecker who walks the town, content with the labor of tearing down?